Pakistan's Deputy Prime Minister Sattar affirmed the full political support for the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor while addressing a meeting with foreign members of various political factions. Dar emphasized the importance of strengthening people-to-people ties with China and acknowledged China's crucial support in infrastructure and energy projects under CPEC. Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif's uh, recent visit, uh, two countries agreed to upgrade CPEC with a particular focus on industrialization, uh, operations of five new corridors, and implementation of important infrastructure connectivity projects, particularly the ML1, the railway project. We are determined to build on the momentum achieved in phase one of CPAC and materialize our energies and uh, uh, on the high quality development of phase two, which is going to be uh, you know, triggered very soon. The industrial parks and the special economic zones being developed under CPAC represent the next stage of Pakistan economic development. We have identified numerous opportunities to enhance trade, foster innovation and drive sustainable growth. Our businesses, companies and entrepreneurs are at the forefront of this endeavor, creating jobs, advancing technology and contributing to Pakistan's and the global economy. He also urged Pakistani politicians to work collaboratively to tackle the country's complex challenges, noting in the turbulent world of rising uncertainty, stability within a country is essential for the development of that country. In a separate political development, the Punjab government imposed Section 144 across the province on Friday, banning protests and public gatherings due to the prevailing law and order situation. This decision coincides with Pakistan Tariqi and Saf's party's plans for nationwide protests demanding the release of their incarcerated leader Imran Khan. Speaking in the National Assembly to Today, leader of the opposition, Omar Ayyub, condemned this imposition. That this time, Punjab has been put in the Punjab in 144 Punjab. Why? Because Pakistan, the parties have called that the free Imran Khan should be protested. The government should be protested and the government of Punjab and the form of Santalis Chief Minister Punjab and his tout, the IG Punjab, the bill called a non-professional chucks. In logo, the Janabi speaker, Pure Punjab, and the Exotalis Lagadi, and we condemn Kartin. On the economic front, the Pakistan Stock Exchange has experienced a significant surge on Friday with the benchmark KSE 100 index gaining 1238.54 points or 1.57% to reach a record high of 80,059.87 points. This follows the index closing at an all-time high the previous day, signaling continued bullish sentiment in the market. The daily pause announced by the Israeli military to facilitate aid flows in Gaza has had no impact, according to the WHO. Richard Peppercorn, the WHO representative in occupied Palestinian territory, stated that there has been no increase in humanitarian supplies since the announcement. Despite the pause on the key road in southern Gaza, a UN spokesperson confirmed that aid deliveries have not improved. The intensity of shelling has increased in northern Gaza and Gaza City. Israeli forces have targeted residential areas, killing eight people, including five municipality workers in Gaza City. In the Zaytun neighborhood, seven people, including three children, were killed in an Israeli airstrike. The situation in northern Gaza remains dire with severe lack of food and humanitarian aid. Kamal Radwan Hospital is overwhelmed with malnutrition cases due to the scarcity of supplies. The Palestinian Presidency and the Palestinian Liberation Organization have welcomed Armenia's decision to recognize the state of Palestine. The official Palestinian news agency, Wafa, reported that the Presidency commended Armenia for recognizing Palestine as an independent and sovereign nation, viewing it as a significant step towards peace and stability. Hossein al-Sheikh, Secretary of the PLO Executive Committee, praised the recognition as a victory for truth and justice. Turkey has expressed its approval for Armenia's decision to recognize the Palestinian state. In a statement on its sex account, Turkey's foreign ministry emphasized that recognizing Palestine is a matter of international law and justice. Turkey pledged to continue efforts to encourage more countries to recognize Palestine. Armenia joined several other nations, including Spain and Ireland, in recognizing the Palestinian state in the next week. The United States and China resumed semi-official nuclear arms talks in March for the first time in five years. During these discussions, Chinese representatives assured the U.S. counterparts that China would not resort to nuclear threats over Taiwan, according to two American delegates who attended the talks. The Chinese delegation expressed confidence in their ability to prevail in a conventional conflict over Taiwan without using nuclear weapons, as reported by David Santoro, the U.S. organizer for the Track 2 talks. 
typically involve former officials and academics who can authoritatively discuss the government's stance even though they are not directly involved in policy making. This is in contrast to Act 1 talks, which are official government-to-government negotiations. The renewed dialogue come in midst developments such as improved U.S. missile defense, better surveillance capabilities, and strengthened alliances. Notably, the U.S., Britain, and Australia signed a deal last year to share nuclear submarine technology and develop a new class of submarines. And Washington is coordinating with Seoul on responses to potential nuclear attacks. The Pentagon maintains that the U.S. nuclear policy includes the possibility of using nuclear weapons if deference for it. The Pentagon maintains that the U.S. nuclear policy includes the possibility of using nuclear weapons if deterrence fails, but only extreme circumstances. During the talks, a Chinese delegate noticed studies indicating that Chinese nuclear weapons remain vulnerable to U.S. strikes, suggesting that their second strike capability is insufficient.